Uh, Jason Kidd, by the way, which I find to be an interesting part of all this, that will now be in charge of coaching Kyrie Irving and sounded pretty optimistic about it. Here he is. We have a relationship. Uh, he's all about basketball. He wants to win and he wants to be coached. And uh, this is, you know, a great opportunity for me to uh, have someone like this uh, to, to help. Um, to split my time between those two and the rest of the team, it's, it's, it's a great challenge and it should be fun. Look, I, I mean, I was with the Nets when J.K. was a point guard there, and he had some moments that were very dramatic and roller coaster like although I don't know if they even compare to some of the stuff that we've seen lately. But, Eddie, are you buying this? Are you buying that he is underneath all of this chill about what's about to happen? I think so, and I think he's looking at it as talent. They needed talent on that roster, and he wanted a dynamic scorer next to Luka. This is the coach that, you know, for as much maligned as Jason Kidd is as a coach in his Brooklyn tenure and then the way his Bucks tenure ended, he's the guy who said, yo, Giannis is a point guard. We need him to put the ball in his hands. He, he's a guy who has been hard on his point guards, demanded a lot, but also got a lot from them, and, and he's one of the greatest point guards of all time. It would be very interesting to see how he decides to mesh the two, but he's familiar yeah. And, and he's familiar with the years he spent coaching LeBron as well, with kind of dealing with that heliocentric part of that offense and ways to milk their other guys on the side. I'm interested to see what he does with them. And, you know, I think there's only one Luka style, but they got to find a way <laughs> to get the most out of Kyrie as well if they want to contend. And I, I think they're going to. I actually think it's a really good pairing it's between player, player, and coach as well. God, I, I, people seem so sure about this. Maybe I'm just a negative person Chandler but I, I don't I don't necessarily think this is a slam dunk 100% no it's not 100% but and again let's not forget he Gary Irving just played for another really good point guard and, and, yeah. and Steve Nash that just got fired uh so listen it, it's at the end of the day I think it's it's worth the risk to go and get a talent like Kyrie Irving. He is a generational mm. talent. He's 30 years old. There is still a lot of basketball to be played. And by the way, they have his bird rights so they can go and sign him for three to five years if it works out. Go get your bag, play well, make a run, mesh, lead these young guys, lead by example. He has, he has the perfect opportunity right now where he doesn't have to be the best player. He's got an ex-NBA player coach that's so relatable. He's got guys like Nico, who he knows from Nike. He's got Michael Finley. He's got Mark Cuban. He's got the coolest staff that you could ever assemble around him to be successful. So if this doesn't work out again, it's probably it for him. No team is going to take a flyer if he now kind of is a negative addition to another team. Everyone's looking at Kyrie Irving, and so all eyes are on him. And, and this is his chance to kind of – put all the drama behind him finally, which we, we always say, but go there, <laughs> and, go, go there and play basketball and, and win games. And, and, I, and I think he has a lot of basketball to play left. Y'all are so cute. I just love the optimism and the idea that people change. This is adorbsies. Um, part of this show, Shams, final package in the trade included Markeith Morris, which I feel like he's not getting enough attention. We haven't even mentioned him. Where do we stand on on how people are receiving that part of the trade? I mean, he, he was he was a part of the trade to make it a two for two. So you know, he was part of it in in in, in, in that way. But listen, Marquise Morris, great veteran player. Him and him and Kyrie Irving toured the facility yesterday in Dallas. I'm told uh, it was a great meeting for Kyrie Irving with Mark Cuban with Nico Harrison. I think they all hit it off. I think they all feel very feel very very optimistic about this partnership uh, and really Kyrie Irving's entry into a new organization, a new culture. It, it's a totally different dynamic with, with Mark Cuban, as Chandler knows well, just a really hands-on owner who, who you know, treats all of his players, uh, you know, as, as, as I think first and foremost as human beings uh, and trying to relate with them on a, on a daily basis. They're not always going to agree on everything, I'm sure, as Mark Cuban and Chandler Parsons, I don't think, agreed on everything. But I think <laughs> at the end of the day, try to see eye to eye on every single factor. And I think the biggest thing has been how does Luka Doncic feel about the trade of Kyrie Irving? From what I'm told, it's been nothing but optimistic feelings. And, and I think just, just, just positive vibes from Luka Doncic about the arrival of Kyrie Irving. I think Luka Doncic views Kyrie Irving as a guy that can shoulder a lot of the load, can decrease his minutes at times, decrease his, his pressure and burden uh, to score and create a lot of the, similar to the way that Jalen Brunson did last year for him. Um, but like Jay Kidd said last night, no, no knock to Jalen Brunson. Ky we're talking about Kyrie Irving. So um, I think overall there's a lot of optimistic uh, vibes right now in Dallas. I mean, worst case, you get two good months, right? 
There you go. There's the silver lining. You just need a couple really great months in a row and, and make it work.